Chef Talk with Kyle Cherrick is brought to you by the following presenting sponsors. Schwanke Kasten Jewelers and Tag Hewer Watches. Mandel and the North End. For more information on these or other supporting sponsors, please click on the banner ads to the right of the Chef Talk episodes for links directly to their websites. For this episode of Chef Talk with Kyle Cherrick, I catch up with Thomas Hauk of Circa 1880. They have become one of the renowned and uh, glorious new restaurants that has popped on the scene in Milwaukee in the last six, eight, ten months. They're in Walker's Point. He opened in May, and it was a slow summer, but as fall set in, the public seemed to grab a hold and not let go of the type of menu and aesthetic and approach that Thomas and his crew were putting out. He was uh, classically trained two years in France, four years in D.C. at a renowned restaurant called Citronelle, and uh, he brought it back to Milwaukee. He's an asset to the scene. He has some candid things to say. He had a bump or two once he opened. It's Chef Talk with Kyle Cherrick and Chef Thomas Houck at Circa 1880. So you're a super big deal here. You guys have had really good success. I mean... No, come on. I mean, we're, in, we're a, in okay. a short period of time that you guys opened and a, and a slew of others, and all cooking at a pretty high level, yeah. and all within, in some cases, a softball throws I distance know, away, a, a from away from it's each other. Nine iron away from each other. It's insane. But yeah. it's, it's a great thing, too, because like, it helps our whole neighborhood. Right. And that, like, I assume five, six years ago, this neighborhood had a huge stigma about it, that people were like, you're going where? Like, you're going to go down to Walker's Point or the Fifth Ward. But now, yeah. like, you even get the Fox Point, like, oh, we're going to go down to Walker's Point, and we're going to, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like the cool and... And it's a great area with a huge history, and especially what they're going to do with the aquatic center for the school, mm -hmm. it's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. And especially because, I mean, property is a little bit cheaper. Well, at least it was for a while. So you have these guys that have this dream, and they got six pennies, and it's time to put it together, and let's throw some paint on the wall and make it happen. Why do you think we don't have more of that? Not that we haven't had a huge influx, but it's taken a long, long, long time in this city. I mean, it's, it's hard. Like, you need to... I mean, if you can do it without a loan, more power to you. Or if you have an investor, then you're going to be great. Yeah. But if you're relying on an SBA loan, which, is, I mean, it's how what helped me. I mean, you need to have your ducks in a place. You need to have a solid business plan. You need to have a good credit score. You need to have a lot of things. And then you need to deal with the city. And the city ultimately wants you to succeed, but, I mean, you have to have it right. And you have to go through the process and make sure. And you need to get the neighborhood and the building. I mean, there's a lot of work to be done. If your goal is to get rich, well, this is... This is not the business Restaurant for you. business like, is not, yeah. So all those years when you were cooking in France and then mm -hmm. you were over here, were you, were you thinking of having your own place and were you filling up a little black book, not yeah. with girls' phone numbers, but with recipes? Yep. I mean, recipes, ideas, like techniques, something that you learned from Michelle or Jean Bear or whoever that is like, this is an awesome way to do something. But one day I want to do it like this. Mm. And you can have the genesis for an idea mm -hmm. and now how you can take your your muscles you and make it your own like what can you do to this what can you right and i mean that idea is always there you get it when you look at something else or when you try something and be like this is cool but you could do it like this and try to start your own path like i'd love to do some of the stuff that michelle did but that that's michelle's food and that's his so now you try to think like how can and, and i mean ultimately i think every cook wants to make their chef proud and i mean i want michelle to be proud yeah and that's the stuff that I mean, it drives you and makes you want to be good and do well. Well, these are the people that formed you. Yeah, and, and exactly. And he takes a pride in it, and I, I want him to be prideful. So as a new restaurant, you have a lot of uh, new people coming to you. Yeah. Meaning they haven't come to this neighborhood, they haven't come here before, they haven't, you know. You guys always have the advantage, I think about this, a restaurant in its first year and a half, two years in this town, mm -hmm. as opposed to like a great old stalwart. Yeah, uh, you for know. sure. Yeah. So, but who's your ideal eater? Is it someone that doesn't have that adroit of a palate and doesn't eat around and check the restaurants and watch TV, you know, all that jazz? No. Or is it someone that really has a great feel for this stuff and comes in with a lot of opinions on both sides? Yeah, no, for sure. That's your more ideal? Well, I want both. I want... No, no, you have to answer. Well, <laughs> I, want the, this, I want the educated diner. Let's play obviously. red light, green light yeah. here, buddy. I want, I want the educated diner, people that, I mean... We like to joke when people oh, this is the best meal yet. Yeah. It's never as good as they say it is, and it's never as bad. The truth is somewhere in the middle there. That's brilliant. Yeah. It's so brilliant. So, like... Yeah, it's true. It's so true. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's the best meal of my life. Oh, yeah. you should go out to eat more. But, right. Yes. 
Do you need a hug? <laughs> yeah, like, it's very nice to say that, but yeah. you know, I don't really believe you. Yeah. We want, I, I think now, like, especially like, if you were to go 20 years ago, like, the conception of dining in people's mind, even people that eat out once a month, twice a month, they know so much more about food. You can just say arugula or radicchio. Right. And everyone knows what you're talking about. Right. Now. There's no longer this, what is this funny well, green thing on my plate? Well, in a they could pick it out. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. red oak, green oak, I'm pretty sure they could figure it out in the mix of everything else. Yeah. But it's nice to have an educated customer, and, and sometimes they get a little jaded, and that's where you kind of got to push it a little bit more, but you got to rein it in because mm -hmm. you need those people that come out once a month, and it's the birthday or it's the anniversary, and you want to obviously blow those people away. Right. But you need to keep it in a way that's still familiar enough to where they, they at least, you okay, I know where the salmon is. Like, you don't want to scare the them off. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to make it seem like you're elitist or whatever. Yeah. You want the best of both worlds. And we want them to take pride in what we do and be like, that's my town, man. And look what we got going on right now. Like, this is good stuff. This, this is good. And it, sometimes it's good to push people in a way where they might not like something. I mean, you don't want to completely remove them from their comfort zone. But if they can get the tasty man, they were like, you know what, I really like this. I thought this was good, but for me it didn't work. Bottom line at the end of the day is I want you to like everything that you had or at least feel good about the meal and be like, you know what, this was really good. You know, I, I like where things are. I mean, safe can get you somewhere, but I mean, you can, you can only go so far like that. Yeah. You got to push. I mean, you, you push what you're doing and you push the staff and you, you push the people that you get things from and you, you try to move it forward and keep going and keep growing. And, I mean, it's a struggle, but it, without that, you, you're just going to stall, and that's not a good thing. So what do you want next now that you're successful? I want this to get better every single day. That's what I want. That's my goal every day. Just a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. a little bit better. You think day. you'll be happy doing this for 5, 10, 15 years? Yeah. You want a second place? No. This is it. I want to I wanna be involved with what I do. And I mean, I worked hard to... to get to this point like there's no more there's there's nothing after the finish line there's no I don't want to be on the Food Network or be on Top Chef or no here it is I'm not trying to get a publishing company like this is it like, you know, like <laughs> right. here we are like and now it's like how good can we make it and that's the challenge I mean we're here now let's really let's strap our boots on and let's get it going like let's push it and see how hard we can get it and it's cool because we have people that believe in that like you don't really or at least me, I don't hire on a skill set. I hire whether or not you believe in what we're doing and if you have passion. I can't teach you passion. I can teach you how to cut an onion. That's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. But if you have the desire where you're going to go home and you're going to read everything you can get your hands on, you're going to come in with questions and why do we do it like this? Why do we do it like that? I saw this. Can we try this? I mean, that I can't teach. And I got a staff full of those people. The sky's the limit. So it's pretty exciting.